All right, guys, we are going live. So let's. Okay, just testing, checking the comments here. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. So I'm just going to move this stuff around a little bit on my other screen. So let's have a look. All right. We're live, loud and clear. Yes, you can. Great. Thank you, Tracy, James, and Rod. Good to see you guys. Um, looks like we've got a nice host of regulars here and some new people coming in. So it's just hit one o'clock, and you know, one o'clock, you're on live from lockdown. How fun. So uh, this week, we've got a fun episode where we're going to be looking at some of your photos and doing fixing and enhancing. And I'll also show you how you can submit your photos for next week. So let's just see who's on here really quickly. Um, we're just going to give people a little minute because right now the YouTube notifications are just starting to go out. And it usually takes a couple of minutes for everyone to kind of roll in here. We're at 184 people right now. All right, so here we go. So welcome, guys, if you are first here. And, of course, Richard here. Uh, Richard Bordeaux was the first one. Does that mean an extra brownie point? You get a gold star, Richard. <laughs> Welcome. JP from Philly. We've got Alan here. We've got Jason. We've got CHY from Chicago. James from New Mexico. Samir here. We've got uh, Rohit. Stuart from Pukekohe, New Zealand. A good regular. Good to see you there, Stuart. Kia ora. Uh, we've got Mary Wood. We've got uh, Ambrose Palmer. Hannah from Rotterdam, another regular. We've got quite a few regulars here. Um, when are we going to be able to get on a plane, stay in a beautiful place, and take some beautiful pictures again? Soon enough, Papa, soon enough. Um, hello from Chihota Monk. I've never heard of there. That's um, wonder where that is. Let me know where that is. Um, and then we've got Derek Lees from England. Um, We've got, hello everyone from Toronto, Canada. We've got Derek there. We've got Larita from West Virginia. Janet from California. Um, we've got Calgary in the house here with Colin. Great name, Colin. You got too many L's in your name though. Um, <laughs> hi from Cincinnati, Mike. And then Tracy, another regular here. I don't think you've missed one yet, have you, Tracy? From rural Oklahoma. Um, we've got Michael Stein, we've got George, we've got uh, HE there from uh, Netherlands, another Netherlands, Southern Arizona. Uh, what else we got? We got Sweden, South Jersey, and yes, Nils, as always, Sweden, good to see you again. How's it going in Calgary? Eh? That's a good uh, uh, Canadian greeting there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thanks uh, for the way you teach. Oh, you're welcome, James. Uh, Virginia, we've got Wisconsin, Germany with Adu. Uh, Lee's UK, uh, Kathy here from Connecticut. Hi, uh, shout out to Connecticut, USA there on the East Coast. Uh, Virginia, uh, we've got hi from sunny California, good spot. Boston, Massachusetts, there in New England. Hello from UK, that's Nick. We've got Papa Michael, uh, that's here again. Um, we'll be able to get back to Chicago. Last trip was years ago in a fine arts building. Oh, great, you were there. Uh, we did a, a tour. Uh, live tour there in Chicago a few years ago. Thank you, Papa Michael. I guess you were present at one of those meetings. And who knows, maybe in the future we can do more tours. So until then, we're just going to keep doing our, um, our weekly live streams here, uh, live from lockdown while we're in lockdown. So one of these days, we can look forward to going out there again in person and, and hitting up all those places um, those live tours are really funny. Any of you guys here been on any of those live tours? Let me know if you have. Um, I'd be I'd be curious how many of you have there. And let me just I'm just gonna pop open one more window here. So I've got two screens just so you know what's going on here. So the main screen is what you see where it should just say live from lockdown, fix and enhance photos, and the other screen is where I'm just kind of trying to just dial into everything, see what's going on, and uh, making sure I'm following the chat and different things like that. So at some point, um, uh, we're going to just... Uh, oh, Russ is in the house. I was wondering if you were there, Russ. I'm glad to see you there from UK. He's a regular, and, um, and Russ is a cheerleader for 
uh, getting you guys to hit the like button, which is always wonderful. Thank you for that, Russ. I appreciate that. And the reason we say hit the like button is because what it does is it'll help boost to YouTube. So people on YouTube right now, if you're subscribed and you've turned on the notifications, you'll see a little red mark, meaning that we're live. And then the more people hit the like button, the more that kind of uh, will share those notifications with people, especially people that haven't turned on all notifications, and it lets them know we're live, and that'll bring more people in here and just make it a, a merrier group here inside our Live From Lockdown crew here. Uh, what are we, the Lockdown crew? Is that what we should call ourselves? I know we're the cafe crew is actually who we are. Um, okay, so that's interesting. So I'm looking on here, and it looks like there's 268 people watching on that window and then the other window i'm on doesn't show that that's interesting okay let me just click here because i want to make sure i'm getting the latest chat and okay 274 on there all right so i'm going to close this other window and we're going to stay on there that's great so that's giving me the latest because i just want to make sure i've got that latest chat so when you guys are asking me questions or anything like that um you know, we can do that. So we're six minutes into it. Usually we really start kicking off into full gear at about 10 minutes in there. So I'll just finish our introduction. Um, so we're coming together right now. I know some places are starting to open up a little bit, but a lot of us are still in lockdown. We're alone with cats, you know, or alone with dogs or, um, you know, just alone. Or maybe some of us are with family, uh, relatives, roommates, um, different kind of situations. We're all in, but what we do is we come here once a week um, at 1 p.m. Pacific time on Thursdays where we come together as artists and it's wonderful because we can all come around the things that unite us is art, photography, Photoshop, and we have some community. So we have a chat here, um, you know, where you guys are pretty active in that chat and feel free to talk to each other, chat in there. Um, that's half of the feature of this, but what we really going to focus on, of course, is Photoshop tutorials. So usually at about 10 after we really dig in and we're going to do these um, tutorials. So what we're doing this week, though, is something that we haven't done before. Actually, I've never done before, um, which may be a surprising. And that is fix my photo. So here we go. I put this out. Um, I want your photos. I put this out last week. I mentioned to you guys um, that I want to work on your photos because we always work on my photos. And, you know, and there's always that thing. It's like, oh, well, you found the perfect photo for that tutorial. What would you do in a real world situation? So what I've done is I've asked you guys to submit your photographs. And um, for now, the easiest way I could figure it out was to do it on social media, um, just to post it and tag me on Facebook or Twitter. Um, I guess we could do email as well. Um, it's just a little harder to keep track of email. But if you do decide to submit photos for next week, number one, make sure we've got them at about 2,000 pixels, you know, at least. So they're large enough to work on. Because if I get them at like 800 by 600, they're really too small to do much to. Um, so you could post those. I'll give you a link actually on social media. And I just realized, I, I know we've been doing these for a couple of months now, that I can actually post links. <laughs> <laughs> to the chat pod just thought of that today um so forgive me of being slow but i know not all of you guys are on um even on social media so what i'm gonna do right now though is i'm gonna find the link here let me grab the link where i asked you to submit your photos and i'm gonna share it in the chat and then you don't you know it might be a little late for for this week because i've pretty much selected some photos but you know if you've got some you want to drop them in there go ahead and do that uh, but what we really want to do is put them in there for future as well because I'm going to go in here let me give you this link this is a link directly to a Facebook post I created I guess we can do it this way <laughs> let me know if that works and uh, and see what happens also letting you guys know um, we also have a Facebook group I don't know if I told you guys that I think we did let me just get this for you just get all this stuff out of the way and then we can dig into the tutorials Okay, so we have a Facebook group, and if you guys want to join, now that I realize I can post links, rather than try to explain it, I'm just going to pop that link in there, and um, that link there is our Facebook group. It's a private group, but just uh, say you want to join, and uh, after the stream, I'll approve you so we can continue the conversation. Wow, we got a lot of people here from New Zealand. This is great. What time is it over there in New Zealand right now? I guess earlier in the morning. 
Um, and we got someone here from boring San Diego. Are you kidding me? San Diego is so much fun, but maybe not right now. Okay. All right. So that's all the stuff I've got there. So this is our um, Facebook page. Just to let you see here, we've got a Facebook page here and we've got people wanting to join right now. And then what I've done is I've given you a link to this. I don't think it was in the private page, but you can see that in there or just click on the other one and just hit reply, drop some photos in there and um, under the fix my photo. And of course, people share their work and everything here. Oh, that was kind of cool. And different things like that. So here we go. I want your photos. So just reply to that, drop some photos in there and um, we can use that. And I just want to make sure I'm using one more and then we're going to start because there's somewhere here where I actually did some grab these photos and I want to make sure that we're using the photos uh, there. Oh, I see Bruce shared our link on Facebook. All right, guys. So how many of you right now that are here? How many of you came from YouTube? Because I think it's time the notifications have really gone out now. And um, three questions here. How many of you came from YouTube? How many of you came from Photoshop Cafe, the website mailing list? Um, you're all photo, you're all cafe crew, by the way. And then another one, how many Kiwis have we got in the house here? We've got uh, Stuart Brathwaite. We've got a few Kiwis in the house here. Um, as you guys probably know, or some of you know or don't know, I was actually born in Scotland, but I was raised in New Zealand. Um, so I, I grew up in New Zealand, um, spent most of my life there. Um, right now I'm in California, uh, Southern, sunny California. All right, so let me just get in here. And I'm just going to, I want to bring up this page and then we're going to start. So I'm bringing the uh, submissions. Here we go. So here are the submissions here. And let me bring this up. I'm going to put the window up there. And there we go. So this is the one I just sent you guys a link to. So I don't know if anyone's been responding to it. But we've got a few people have submitted. And we're going to have a look at some of these pictures. So... Diane, I, I think she wants a zebra out of this shot. She just wants a picture of her husband uh, taking pictures. Um, I assume it's her husband. Um, and then we've got Sven here. I love this picture. By the way, you guys are submitting beautiful pictures. They're too nice. You should be sending <laughs> less nice pictures so I can fix them. Um, but this is a beautiful one for Norwegian mountains here. We're going to look at that. And we'll see how we go with time. Lizette sent us one of this amazing Harley Davidson. Like, man, look at the rims on this thing. Incredible. So she has problems cutting this out. Um, so we'll we'll have a look at that. Let me just make this fit the window. I hate that I hit the maximize button in Mac now and it takes full screen. I, I don't want that. All right, so this is, this is one option there. Um, what else we got here in the pictures that we're gonna look at this week? And of course, we might not get through them all. We'll do as many as we can. Um, we've got this one here from Monica, and she had a thing here wanting to shout out on her Instagram. There's her Instagram there. And she wants to cut out all these clocks, and I think that'll be a fun challenge. Uh, we have Ken here with a photo from the World Trade Center and 9-11. I'm sorry, but there's just, there's not really a lot we can do with this photo, unfortunately, because there's just not enough pixel information. We could increase contrast or something like that and try and get a little bit back, but... If it's not there, it's not there. So I, I, we don't have a magic bullet for that one. I'm sorry. And I'll just be honest when it comes to those kind of things. Um, you know, we'll do what we can. And what else we got here? Oh, we've got some just coming in right now. Uh, some newer ones here. We've got this one here, which is nice. This beautiful um, white tail sea eagle in Scotland. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Beautiful photo. I don't know there's a lot we can do with it. Maybe we will lighten up the wing a little bit and, and get rid of the uh, second bird or something. But that doesn't really need a lot. Um, and then we've got this one here, which is really nice from Stuart. And I see Stuart's in there right now. And we've got some hills here. Um, really nice. And look at these beautiful mountains in the background. This is what we call hills in New Zealand. In California, they would call these mountains probably. Um, <laughs> Kidding, kidding, guys. Uh, but those are mountains. Mountains of the year. Those are mountains. You've got snow. You've got, they're tall. They're high. Um, so, yeah, we've got some things we can do to that. So, why don't we, without further ado, jump in and let's start looking at some of the pictures. So, once again, that link is in the chat. If you want to submit some of your pictures, um, I'd love to see them. And I can't guarantee we'll get through them all or that we'll even use them. But at least... Um, 
you know, we I'd, I'd like to see them, and I appreciate you guys sharing them because they're just beautiful photographs. So why don't we start here with this lovely one from Norway, and I just love this photo. Great job, Sven, uh, Sven, Sven, Sven. I'm sorry, I'm not very good with the uh, Norwegian names, but this is just really got a great mood. When I saw it small, I was like, you know, this looks nice. But then when I looked at it large, I was just like, what a beautiful scene. We've got the sun just kind of, I guess, rising. Um, I'm going to be my guess. It's probably a sunrise rather than a sunset just because there's so much moisture in the air. Um, and the sun's just kind of trying to break through all this kind of um, cover here. And I just love the mood, the soft mood. And look at the depth, the uh, perspective. What do we call it? The atmospheric perspective here as things are going further into the distance. So we don't want to lose that. Like, I don't want to push this in and do a, um, you know, a really harsh uh, tonal adjustment and contrast and dehaze and try and bring that out. Because this is some of the beauty of the photo. And I love the bridge because to me, the bridge is, and this is what we're going to do with the edit I'm going to do today. We're going to use this as a bridge between going from two moods. So up here, I want to kind of lighten this up a little bit. We're going to add a little bit more detail here. And then you're going to cross the bridge into the unknown or into the spooky or mysterious or however you want to call it. All right. So that's kind of my thoughts on the shot. Uh, personally, I love the photo. And even as it is, it, it looks great. So I just want to just preface all of this. Now, when I do these edits, there's just one possible thing I would do with the photo. There's no right or wrong way of editing a photo because I can make this a really warm photo. I could make it a very cool photo. It really depends if you have a particular story you want to tell, your personal taste. Um, so as I edit, this is just my interpretation or what I would do. To it. And I just want to make that clear because when I do tutorials, I'm not doing that to say, you know what? I know everything about photography. I got it right and you should all do it like me. That's not my approach. It never has been. My approach has always been, you know, here's some ideas. Take these ideas, apply it to your own work and see if it helps you. And that's that's what I'm trying to do here. All right. So the first thing we want to do, though, is we want to get rid of this little spot here. Unless this is a UFO and this was actually a photo of the UFO. Um, that would be like getting rid of Cindy Crawford's mole. Probably shouldn't do that. But I'm going to guess it's probably sensor dust. So I'm going to go into Photoshop here. And the quickest way to get rid of this is just to grab the spot healing brush. And, and I'm just going to paint over it. It's just as simple as that. And it's gone. There's so many ways you could do that. Um, but just that's just quick and easy and the reason I want to fix that first is because I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm gonna process it two different ways and then we're gonna blend it together I know last week we talked about HDR if you want to expand the dynamic range the way to do that is not to process it a couple of times but you can do this if when you're trying to mix two different moods and the reason I want to do what we're gonna do is because I want the background here to be a little bit different than the foreground here. And so the easiest way for me to do that, at least preliminary, is to go and do some camera raw adjustments. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. And I'm just going to drag that down to the new layer icon. And I'm just checking in the chat there that we can see everything. And everyone can see good. Everyone's on board. All right, guys, we are rolling right now. So here we go. Hey, um, and just a quick shout out is Andrew Kavanaugh. Good to see you, Andrew. Um, check out Andrew's group, Photoshop and Lightroom. He's got almost 100,000 or something like that. It's a huge group, or maybe it's hundreds of thousands. Um, it's a very, very large group. Um, good, good Photoshop stuff. All right, so now we've got duplicates of this layer. The reason I've done that is because I want to do some things inside of Camera Raw. So let's choose Filter, and we're going to go down to the Camera Raw Filter. Now, I know not everybody here is going to be even on CC. Some people are on Photoshop CS6 or CS5 still. Um, so it doesn't matter what version you're on, this will work. But the big change with Photoshop CC uh, many years ago, by the way, um, and if you haven't upgraded, it's definitely worth it just for this feature. Camera Raw is built in as a feature, and it has been since CC. But before that, you can open it in Camera Raw, even a JPEG, by right-clicking inside a bridge and choosing Open in Camera Raw. So if you're on an earlier version, that's how you do it. All right, so we've opened this inside of Camera Raw. And of course, we could have got rid of that spot in here just as easy. But the reason I decided to do it first is because we're going to do copies of this. So I'm looking at this photo, and I'm thinking, man, there's a lot of different things we could do with it. 
you know, we could go here, we could warm this up and see how it changes that mood. Now we start to get, you know, almost like a fairy tale kind of a mood. Or if we went cooler, see how, wow, see what it's doing here? See how mysterious it's looking? So either way is right. So there's not necessarily a right and a wrong way of doing it. It's just a different way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this background. I love this eerie background. So I'm just going to bring down the coolness just a little bit, not too much. Not worrying about the rest of this photo at the moment. Just focusing. This is the area we're looking at right now. And let's have a look. What can we do here? I don't think I'm going to do much with the um, exposure or contrast. I might reduce the highlights. And then what that's going to do and increase the shadows. And what that's going to do is even going to drop down the contrast even more. So we're getting more of this kind of soft, dreamy kind of a look. Now, I'm not going to touch the texture or clarity unless I want to reduce it. But it's just something I don't really enjoy. Like people do negative clarity to soften. And you know what? It looks, it kind of, in this case, maybe it is working a little bit. Um, but it's something I tend not to do too much. Um, same thing with the negative texture. If you want to do that, I think the texture is a better slider than clarity because uh, it doesn't give you such crunchy edges. But I'm not going to do too much with that right now. So I just want to keep it like that. Maybe go a little bit cooler. And all we're doing is just preserving this nice background. That's it. And then we're going to click OK. So let me make a third copy just so we can see um, the before and after when we go to do all this. OK, so we've got that. So we've made that a little bit cooler. And if we compare this, it's a different look. But it's just kind of cooling the whole photo. And this is nice because what we're going to do is now we're going to go up and we're going to create another version where we're going to warm it. And we're going to actually use this to break out little patches of sunlight. So let's go under here and we're going to choose the filter, camera raw filter. And by the way, Sven, just beautiful photo. So anything I do here um, is definitely not to take away from what you have done because it's such a great photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this. It might be getting a little much here, but I'm looking at it kind of hitting these bushes here in the front. And I'm just kind of thinking, OK, how's that going to do it? And I want to open up the shadows a little bit. So let's open up those shadows a touch. I'm kind of looking at it here and I'm liking what's happening here. Maybe not huge fan of doing that there on the bridge. Um, but that's okay. I mean, we could use adjustments, localized adjustments, but we're not going to do too much of that right now. And that's looking nice. And let's play around with those whites. Not too much, because if I do too much, it's going to give me too much contrast. I might open up those shadows even more and take the exposure up just a touch. Okay, so see what it's doing? It's starting to lighten this area here. Maybe a little over the top. Let's go back here. And I'm going to push the texture up a little bit. See what I'm doing? It's giving just a little bit of detail to this forward part. So what I'm going to do by creating a little more sharpness and detail in the front and softening it more in the back, it's going to make it seem even more three dimensional. It's going to give it a little bit more depth in that image. All right. And I could even punch up the vibrance just a little bit. OK, so we can see what we're doing here. Now, if we look at this, you know, um, before and after, you know, that would be one possible edit. But what we're going to do is we're going to blend these photos together. So I'm going to click OK. And now we've got these two like that. It's looking good. So as you can see here, if we look at the original, we can see we've got a warmer version and a cooler version. Either of these could be an edit. But what we're going to do here now is we're going to blend them together. So I'm going to grab the top layer and I'm going to create a layer mask. All right. Now with this layer mask, um, selected here. I'm going to grab the brush and I want to have a nice soft brush. So first thing I'm going to do is just hit the D key. It resets the foreground background colors. And that's just always a good thing to do because you might think you have, might have white and black, but you might have shades of gray. And I'm just going to hit the X key and that's going to flip them around. So now I've got black as the foreground color. Great. That means I can paint away parts of this layer with black and it will reveal the layer underneath exactly where I want it. Great. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is make sure we get a soft edge brush. So let's go up here under the brushes. And this option here is other brushes. And you just want to have a nice soft round. 
So I see we've got soft round here, pressure set for size, pressure set for opacity. That's because I'm using a Wacom pen. Um, and if you don't, I'll show you where those settings are in a sec. And let's make the size a little bit bigger to start with. Great, and let's keep the hardness all the way down so we get a soft brush. Because we want this to blend really smoothly, so we want a soft uh, edge. So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping the right bracket key to make it bigger. Then what we're gonna do is let's look under the brush settings just to let you guys know. And I know Russ um, or a couple of people actually have been asking for something on a Wacom tablet. So maybe next week we'll drop in a little bit of a tutorial on a Wacom tablet as well. But we'll cover some of that right now. Not much, but we'll just touch on it. Um, and so what we wanna do is make sure that transfer is turned on and pen pressure is set. So that means I can change the opacity by how hard I press and um, and nothing else. So if shape dynamics was turned on, I would probably turn that off because I don't want the brush changing. And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed if you use a Wacom and, and let me know in the chat who's using the Wacom and congratulations by the way um, to Miguel and um, uh, oh, sorry, I, I forget right now, but uh, two of our uh, viewers here um, won Wacom tablets last week. They won an Intuos Pro Medium. So congratulations to you two. Um, hopefully those have arrived, or if not, they're well on their way. Um, so here's the thing. So sometimes you have it where you're playing and then the size changes as well as the softness can be very, very annoying. So what you wanna do is make sure that shape is off and transfer is on for that. Um, and that's just going to kind of help a little bit. Okay, so Donna uses a Wacom. Andrew uses a Wacom. We've got a bunch of you using Wacom. That's great. All right, so um, let's just go in here. And Tracy loves her Wacom. All right, so what we're going to do is now that we've done that, we want to drop the opacity down. I'm going to drop it down quite a bit. I'm just going to tap the one key or the two key to drop it down to 10% or 20%. Now, if you're using a mouse, you're going to want to work at a very, very low opacity. Okay, so watch what happens. Now, as I begin to paint, see what's happening as I'm just slowly just going around there and I'm blending in just a little bit at a time some of that color. All right, so if we look at this now and we look at the before image and the after image, see what I've, do I've done? by just gently painting around there. Now that we've got the nice warm orange or you know the warmer tone for the sun, so it looks more realistic now. So we've got that blue kind of makes sense now because you can't have a blue sun because that's where the heat or the warmth is coming from. It's trying to cut through that layer, that fog, or we would call it marine layer here in California. All right, so that's great. So I think I like what's happening with the sky now. And I also love doing this, and you might find that I do this a lot. You might notice I love color. Like one of my strengths, probably my greatest strength in uh, this industry is color. And so I'm adding two colors here. And if you guys know, blue and orange are contrasting colors. They're uh, complementary colors. They're the opposite on a color wheel. And uh, let me just show you something here, because uh, this is important to understand. Um, I hope you guys don't mind me going, let me know if, if this is okay for me kind of giving you this extra stuff. If you want me to just move on with the tutorial, I can. Uh, but one of the nice things about working with the uh, live streams is that we can kind of go these different directions. So if we go into the color panel here and we choose a color wheel, this is what a color wheel is. And so if you look at orange, yellows, blues, you go to the very opposite. See that? Orange, blue. If we were going green, see where we're getting to the magentas, the reds. These are the opposite. And if you're looking for color to pop, when you choose the opposite side of that color wheel, that complementary color is what it's called, it's always gonna pop, it's always gonna work with that color. Um, and just look at nature or different things. Even, you know, you think about Christmas, what do we got, green and red? They're the opposite on the color wheel. Um, you know, you'll see these color combinations now, like you'll see tropical fish, you'll see the uh, purples and the yellows and, uh, you know, the lime greens. Those are the opposite on the color wheel. So it's something really worth learning about. Um, okay, it looks like you guys like the extra tips. Okay, thanks, Rod and um, K. 
KG and Donna. Okay, great. So I started life before I was doing photography as a graphic designer. So learning color was really important. And so I'm very fortunate for that. Um, so anyway, so that's why I, you'll see a lot of my photos. I'll try to add those complementary colors and see how it's adding something already. Because if you look at it here, it's beautiful, but it's a little monotone. But you go here and now you're getting a little more color that's a little bit more pleasing. All right, let's continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this mask now. And I'm going to choose a smaller brush. Now, there's a few different things we could do here. Let me show you some of the things we could do. One of the things we could do is just go across here and just start to just paint this in. In fact, why don't I just go super heavy handed? I'm going to take this to 100% opacity and paint with black. So one of the things I could do is just go in here and this either of these are kind of completely valid. So see what I'm doing is now we've got this is kind of lit here and um, you know, we could go up into the tree. Um, we could kind of add a little bit into that tree there and you know, the smart thing to do, of course, would be to, to use the selection tools to kind of select the tree, which I really should do. But just for the sake of time, I'm not going to bother with that right now. And maybe here I could start and then start to paint a little less and just start to blend that in. See what I'm doing is we're just kind of bringing that color across. That's one way we could approach this and see how it's adding a lot of color. So we go from this, you know, as the beginning and after, I think that's a perfectly valid way of working. I uh, don't know if you guys like that or not. Um, let's have a look here. Um, let's go here. Let's undo. I'm going to undo this a few times. Just control Z. In fact, I could just paint with white. Why don't I just paint with white and I'm just going to paint this back. So we're just going to go back to how it was. And we'll look at it a different way because we're going to approach this just a little different. So that's one of the ways we could do it. And to be honest, that's a lot of my aerial pictures. What I just did there is one of the ways I would approach that. But there's also another kind of a fun way to do it. And let's bring our opacity up to let's try 30% and see how it looks. And that would be to just kind of create it like there's a little bit of sun just starting to break through. And so we could get some of these areas. In fact, let's even go higher. Let's go up to 50%. And we could just pick up some of these areas maybe where the sun's starting to hit. See that? And a path. See how we got that pathway where the sun's coming and just kind of starting to break through. And, you know, if I do that, let me drop it maybe 70% opacity. I'm guessing with these opacities right now. And I know a lot of people use flow. Um, and then I could start to paint the front part of this tree and see what's happening now. That light's just starting to hit that front part of the tree there. Um, and see what it's, it's also giving it just a little dimension, a little shape. I'm just putting that on the trunk. Uh, we could do that. We could even do it that, you know, the top surface, maybe I'll drop that opacity down a little lower and it could be just starting to hit the top of the bridge here. See, see what we're doing. And so now we're kind of going in here and doing a little bit more of a custom kind of feel. Um, I like to work like this, you know, is it better? I don't know. I just enjoy it. Um, you know, and you know, I could even go in here and start to paint some of the edges, you know, so literally what we're doing now is we're starting to mix painting with, uh, with photography and see in those front areas. Cause I know those front areas would be receiving some light and see what we're doing here. And, you know, even on the top of these, I might even give them a little extra here. Um, you know, I'm just doing this quickly and, you know, maybe the top of this rock might be just seeing some of that light and it's pretty easy because you can tell the areas that would be getting the light and see what we're doing there. Um, and how are you guys liking this? Is this the kind of thing, um, that you guys like? Um, and someone asked me a question there about flow versus opacity. So the difference between opacity and flow is opacity is if I press as hard as I can with that pen, that is going to be um, as dark as I go. So if I want, I'm at 40% right now. So if I push as hard as I can, it will come out 40% with each stroke. If um, I do half pressure, it's going to come out at 20%. And it's a constant flow because um, the flows turn up to 100. So that means it's just going to constantly come like that. If you turn the flow down, it builds up over time. So I know some people will work 100% opacity and maybe do 10% flow. And the longer they hold it, the more it comes out. For me, most of the time, I do everything with opacity and pen pressure 
rather than flow because I've never really grown up using an airbrush. I grew up sketching with pencils. So that's more of a natural feel for me. So that's why I work that way. So um, of course, whatever works for you is fine. So if we look at this, this is what we had before. And this is what we have after. And we can see, hey, that's, that's not bad. And we could even go further if we wanted. If we wanted to just dodge a little light on here, we could. And so I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key. And I'm going to create a new layer. So we've got this new layer here. And I'm just going to put this into Overlay Blending Mode. And that's nice. And it's just going to let our white just kind of blend in a little bit better than if we were to just work on a regular normal mode. So this is what I could do now is I could go in with a slightly bigger brush here and start to just kind of uh, wrong color. <laughs> Hit the X key here. Let me just undo that. I want to make sure I'm painting with white and I could just kind of just pick up some of these surfaces. See what I'm doing there? And just kind of let a little bit of that light come through and start to hit some of the tops of these bushes. Um, I, I just love that. And the green color just so gives itself to this kind of a, a feel. I feel like Bob Ross of photography right now. I mean, not that I'm, no, if we're in the same level as Bob Ross, but I think if Bob Ross was a photographer, he'd be doing something like this. I don't know. All right. So anyway, that's, see, and see how it's starting to just pop and come alive. So this is what we started with. And, um, and this is what we ended up with. I don't think that's too bad. Um, you know, it was one interpretation. And Sven, if you are there and you're watching this or you like this, um, let me know. I'll, I'll send it to you. In fact, I'll upload it. I'll, why don't you just save as, and I'll just drop this onto the desktop and boom. And what I'll do is I'll upload this to that Facebook thread so you guys can have a look and, and see. Oh, the happy little tree. Yeah, if we look at this, see this tree here. Watch this tree, if we see how it's flat there and we've added that. Now you're telling me I should be dodging that tree. Um, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you for uh, bringing that up there. So why don't I do that? Let's go in and just do a little bit on that tree here. So we're going to drop it down. I, I want about 20% opacity. And this is probably where I'd want to make a selection. Because if I go here and I just use the quick select tool, which is not going to work on a blank layer, if I use it on the tree here, um, I could actually, you know, um, see see what happens is you can go in here, you can isolate that area. So say we just wanted to paint in there. We could use it to isolate that so I don't go over too much. And you don't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to grab the brush here and just start to paint a little bit on the front like I would. See what we're doing? We're just kind of painting that. I'm probably going to go too far with it. Um, but let's see. Yeah, that's working. Control D to turn off that selection. And see what I've done just on the front here before, after. So we can do that, you know. And a lot of the time, I, I don't even bother the selection, to be honest. I just paint. I've got a pretty steady hand. So I can just paint it. But if you want to have those nice crisp edges, then, um, you know, just go ahead and make the selections as well. All right, so I'm just going to save that. That's that's that tree. I think, I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so... Oh, thank you, uh, Glass Tripod. Um, and that was fun, by the way. Submit more photos like that. I love working on photos like that. Okay, so we want to look at Stuart Braithwaite's one. And this is just begging, begging for dodging and burning. When I see this, I'm just like, oh my gosh. It's the perfect candidate because I'm looking at these curves. And man, we can just make these just really sing. So why don't we go in and we're going to do a little adjustment first um, in camera raw. So uh, thank you for submitting this one, Stuart, from New Zealand. And um, well, I have that there. All right. So I'm just going to duplicate the layer so we can do a before and after. And I believe, did you, did you say this was in Otago? I'm sorry, I, I forget. Um, you did mention, I, I believe it's in the South Island. Um, so just pop in there the location and let people know about this beautiful location. And also, is this where you live? Is this, um, this is a beautiful place to live? All right, so we're gonna go to the filter here and we're gonna choose the camera raw filter. Good place to start. And in case you guys haven't noticed, I pretty much always start in camera raw filter. 
Um, it's a good place to just kind of kick things off and get your basic overall adjustments done before you go into Photoshop uh, proper and do all your little fine-tuning adjustments. All right, so let's just look into this. I'm, I, you know, one of the things I'm noticing here, this has natural complementary colors. There's our orange and our blue. Once again, you'll see this in nature all the time. And now that I've mentioned it, you'll probably notice it a lot more. All right, so I'm thinking maybe we could open up the exposure a little bit. I'm just going to just slightly brighten this up. Maybe warm it a little. Just because what that's going to do is it's going to bring out a little bit more on here. And it can also, the warmer you go, it can kind of emulate sunlight. So it has a kind of a cool uh, look to it. You could go the opposite here if you wanted in the mountains in the background. Um, you could select those. And I'm sorry, I'm about to sneeze, guys. All right, I did not sneeze. <sighs> But, you know, when you feel the sneeze coming on, it's always great in front of a whole bunch of people. All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to just play around a little bit. We're going to recover these highlights a little. And I'm not sure if we want to open up the shadows. Let's try it. Maybe not really. We don't need to do that. Let's hit these blacks just to give it a little more contrast. And what does it look like? We do the whites. So I've increased contrast a little bit. Sometimes in a situation like this, I might grab the uh, the pen here, the quick selection tool. This is a masking tool, quick, uh, what, what do we call it? The, I forget the name of it, it doesn't matter. The masking tool. Anyway, so we're gonna go in here and we're painting with this, uh, the adjustment brush, sorry. And so all I'm doing is I'm just going there and notice it's kind of not going over the lines. And that's because under here I've turned on the, let's go down. Auto mask. So as long as we've got auto mask on, it's going to select in here. And if you want to change the color of that mask, just click on there. And you know, if we wanted to make it red, we can make it red there, and it'll just change the color of the mask. I guess that only changes the color once you've already uh, started. Oh, we'll turn it on this way. There we go. All right. So now we've got that red mask, and we can see what we're doing here. And we're just masking this out because I want to maybe adjust this part separately. All right, so now that we've selected that with the mask, hide the mask, and I wanna reset these settings. So I'm gonna go up to the top here, click on the little menu, and we're gonna reset local correction settings. And I just realized, let me pull this over to the side here because you guys probably had me covering it. So the uh, auto mask is here at the bottom. Great. And so now we're going to go across here. And what I want to do is now I've reset them. So it means that this adjustment here has no effect because everything is reset. And I might just take the temperature. I'm going to cool it down ever so slightly, like minus five. And I want to give this just a maybe a little touch of contrast, which is weird because normally you, you would reduce contrast in the distance. But I just love these mountains. I just feel like these mountains just want to pop. All right, so we've done that a little bit. And that's it. I didn't do a lot to that separately. So we're just going to go here and do a little bit more overall. I want to just push the texture up a little bit to make this grass really pop. Look at that. All right. So let's have a look and see what we've done. That's before and that's after. And you can see I haven't done a whole lot to that photo. It's a great photo. It's properly exposed. It's nicely composed. There's a lot of good things about the photo already. Maybe touch the vibrance just a little bit. Great. And now we're going to click OK. Now, and one thing I'm, I don't know if you guys have noticed, look at this, see how soft it looks here? And if I look at this view, it's at 73.45%. Watch this. If I change it to 75%, boom, see how the detail just pops? So I've noticed in the magnification, and it's funny because one of the default magnifications of Photoshop is 66%. And I don't know if, you know, I've, I've never had any, I've, anyone else ever bring this up, but I notice if I look at like a 25, 50, 75, 100%, or even in 15% increments, it seems to show a better display than uh, a random number. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Um, so I don't know. Oh, can't see the bottom of the tool panel. I think that was before, right? Yeah, because I'm not adjusting anything. Yeah, where I, where I am here. Okay, great. All right, so what I'm going to do is just so you know that, and I'm just going to zoom out. See how it goes softer now? 
and it's at like 59 something. If I go to 60, how's that gonna look? So let's hit 60%. Mm, maybe. So if I go to 75% though, you watch the details just pop. See that? So that's just something to bear in mind. Now, if you're dodging and burning and working, it doesn't matter, but you want to go to those kind of magnifications when you're doing any detailed work, like you're doing any sharpening or anything like that, you wanna do that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do some dodging and burning on this. So we're just gonna create a new layer. Same way we did before, hold the Alt or Option key, new layer pops up and we're gonna go change the mode to overlay mode. Now, if I was gonna use the dodge and burn tools, I would turn on the 50% gray. We discussed that last week, but we're not using the dodging and burning tools, so we don't need it this week. So we're just gonna go here, and I'm just gonna hit the brush. Now, I wanna make the brush nice and soft, just like the same brush we used before, so I don't have to make adjustments to it, but just let me remind you, we want the softness turned all the way down, and we've got our pen pressure. We hit this icon here, open it up, set to opacity, but not shape. And by the way, if you keep changing brushes and these keep going back, that's what these little icons are. If you lock that and lock that, if I change a brush, it's gonna keep pen pressure on opacity and it's gonna keep shape dynamics turned off. So you can override the local brush settings. All right, so we're gonna start very low opacity, 10%. So I tap the one key, we've got that. And I'm gonna start with the shadows. I always start with the shadows. No reason, I just do. And I'm gonna put these on two separate layers. And we just call this one S for shadow and H for highlight. I like to name my layers, but I like to name them as quickly and simply as possible. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enhance these shadows a little bit. So we're looking at this and we know when we go down to these crevices here, there's going to be shadow. And so I'm just going to quickly do this now. Bear in mind, when I'm doing this in real life, um, you know, on an actual photo, I might spend, I don't know, depending on the photo, something like this one, I'll probably spend a good 15, 20 minutes on it, maybe. Um, you know, something more complex. I mean, I could spend an hour on a photo um, doing that. Sometimes just a couple of minutes, but we're going to do it very quickly because I'm just trying to show you guys the principles here. So understand I'm not going for perfection in any of these. And so what I'm doing is I'm just painting in those shadows and we're just enhancing them. And it's really, it's gonna to start to engrave them. You know, up here, we're doing the same thing. And, uh, you know, especially here. And this works also really particularly well if you have a day that is um, kind of, you know, the sun is just kind of burning out. There's not a lot of shadow, like you didn't get the best time of the day or it's overcast and it's flat. In either of those situations, you can go in here and completely change the lighting of this. So we're laying down the base with the shadows and you can kind of see what's happening a little bit, but when we switch to the highlights, this is when it's really gonna kind of, kind of come alive. All right, so I'm just randomly going over there. And if we look at it, is our shadows before and our shadows after. See what it's doing is it's really just enhancing what's going on here. Nice thing about working non-destructively on the layers, if we feel I've gone too far in any of these, we can always adjust the opacity. All right, so let's flip this around. And um, yep, Central Otago, New Zealand. Thank you, Stuart. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint with white. And this is where it pops, because what I'm doing now is I'm painting with light. And so I'm just, gonna go here quickly so let me just tell you what I'll do usually is I'll start with a big brush like I am now and I'll just kind of hit it quickly I'll hit these lighter areas very very quickly with the big brush see what I'm doing here and then I probably come in with a smaller brush and hit the details so I want to kind of light that up a little bit and just kind of going here we're just kind of hitting that see what see what's happening and you'll really see in here if we want to really add it you could add light where there is no light by the way and it will pop. I probably got a little heavy handed on there. Um, and let's get down a little smaller. And I'm just going to kind of hit these a little bit. It looks like, um, all right. And this is a good example. Areas like this just pop. All right. So let me just kind of show you what we're doing there. And this is just going to give it detail. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go down here to the photo before. 
And then we're going to go to the one afterwards. So we've done some basic adjustments. And then just I'm just letting our eyes calibrate a little bit. And then we're going to drop in our shadow. Then we're going to drop in our highlight. I think the highlight's too strong. I'm going to take the opacity down and blend it in. And see, that's the nice thing about kind of approaching it. We're down at 58%. So we've gone you know, quite high with that. So if we look at this before and after, there's our shadow and highlight. And see how we're starting to really make it pop with the dodging and burning. And that's just a little kind of taste on it. Um, maybe make some snow on top of the mountains pop more. Yeah, we could definitely do that. All we need to do is just, you know, we could hit these. Um, actually, one way we could do it is just to hit the curves. So why don't we go here? We're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. We're going to pop this on top. And what I want to do is just hit that snow. Okay, so we're just going to turn it up. Now it's adjusting the whole photo, of course. But what we're going to do now is we're going to just yeah I hopefully I didn't go too fast but I, all I did is just applied a curves adjustment which brightens up the whole photo see that everything's bright and what we can do now is invert this curve so control I will invert it so what it's doing is it's hiding that adjustment layer and all I need to do is grab the brush and I just paint with white where I want that enhancement to work which would be over here over the snow now I might have done something else too, you know like maybe added a little boost of contrast or something there but we're just gonna kinda make these just make that white just kinda pop a little bit and uh, here we go I've got it let me turn the opacity up I'm just gonna turn it up to 100 just I'm probably going a little too much but just to speed up things and all I'm doing is I'm just painting over the area I want to enhance and so this is kind of how you would enhance any part of a photograph by itself so if we look at that before and after see how we really made that snow pop a little bit more and if you wanted to go further just double click on that adjustment and um, we can go in here and we could look see what we can do there we can just play around those areas we've painted and you can see where I went over but it doesn't matter with the adjustment that I had uh, that's one way of doing it. Another way we could do it is actually select these highlight areas. Let me show you this. If we choose select, and then we go to color range. This is a form of luminosity masking that we're doing right now. It's not the full luminosity masking, but it's a form. And what we can do is just go under here, and we just change this to highlights. And now, as we adjust this range, we are literally just selecting the brightest parts of the photo, and we can soften those transitions or make it very hard transition. Click OK. See how they select it? And now we could adjust those independently and we would get a much more accurate adjustment. In fact, why don't we go in here and create a new curves adjustment. So we're going to get rid of that one. And we're going to go in here and we're going to create a curves adjustment. And now, look at this, we're only affecting the snow. So this is luminosity masking um, at its most simplest form. So what that means is we're just isolating a particular tone. In this case, it's the bright whites. You can do the same things with the shadows or the 50% grays. So um, see if that's very interesting. And then, you know, the other one is more contrast in the mountains. That's an option I could have done with the camera raw adjustment. Um, you know, when we did our original camera raw adjustment, remember when we went in and we selected that? All I needed to do is punch up the contrast uh, to make them pop. But I made a creative decision to not do that because of atmospheric perspective. I wanted the foreground, in this case, to be more contrasty and more vivid. And whereas this is a little bit more faded because it's in the distance. Because if I was to punch up the contrast on here, it would make the mountains look closer. It would... Uh, it wouldn't have so much separation between foreground and background and that's why I made that decision now of course if you really want to make these pop you could that's um, you know and once again you know you could do what I did or you know even grab a quick selection brush here and go and select this area here is another way and of course you know you could go in once again and I'm just gonna grab a curves adjustment you know if we wanted to do it that way jump in there with the curves Pull down the shadows, pull up the highlights, and see what we're doing. We're playing around now with the contrast. And so that's how you would um, make those adjustments there on that area of the photograph. 
See that? So was that was that helpful? Uh, Paul, Paul was the one asking for about that. And uh, Myra, great choice on the mountains. Thank you. So the nice thing about working this way, of course, is I can turn that off and go back to uh, that original uh, look there. Okay, so that's Stuart. So I'm going to save this. I don't know. I'll, I'll upload it. Um, I'm sure Stuart probably did a much nicer um, edit of this himself. Um, but that's, you know, one, one way to approach it. The other way we could have is light coming through here. So when I'm doing that dodging and burning, um, let me just, you know, I could have gone in here with a brush that's a like slightly warmer brush. In fact, I would do this. Let me show you. Why don't I show you? Another kind of option. So what I did is I just grabbed, I know you can't see that corner there. All I did is I went under the adjustment here and I just chose curves. And by the way, I have a ton of tutorials on curves if you guys want to know more about them. Um, okay, so with this curve, what I could do is I could warm up the whole photo. And if you go in here, you see red, green, and blue, you're going to notice there's no yellow. But if you look on the color wheel, the opposite of blue is yellow. So that's useful to know. This color wheel, by the way, learn it. Um, just It's just the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Indigo, by the way, is made up. Inigo is a color, but it's not in the rainbow. Um, and that's all it is. It's just a circular rainbow. All right. So um, if we go here, we obviously, if we want to make it warmer, well, we can reduce blue. And see if we reduce blue, it's going to make it more yellow. And then we go here, RGB, and we can just lighten it up to compensate because we did darken it. And now, um, don't want to go too fast for you guys here, but all we're going to do now is just invert that mask, Control I. Another way is if I go here and I view my properties, this is the properties panel. I just double clicked, by the way, to open it. You could go under window properties to open this. There's a little button that says invert. And so if I invert that mask, that mask is now gone. And now I could paint if I wanted. And I, I love painting a lot with these photos, as, as you know. Um, now just paint with white. And man, you know, we could have the sun coming across here the warmer version of it. Look at this. And now that sun's kind of hitting that valley. Now I really feel like total Bob Ross now. <laughs> but I'm doing this very fast. So, um, you know, of course, we take a little more time. And I feel like it's a little too green. And the nice thing about that, double click, we can always adjust it later. So if we go in here, under our curves, we could go under the green. And why don't we reduce the green a little bit? There we go. Now it's not so green. Maybe get a little more red. You know, we could just, you know, see how we can change the colors of those. And if we had like a really red sky or we're doing a sunset kind of time of the day, you would warm that up a little bit. So you can kind of play around with those colors. And of course, if you don't like the colors here, we can just go into these color channels. Watch this, just go into the blue here. Just reset it just by clicking it and dragging it out. Here's the greens. So all we're doing now is just adjusting the brightness. And see, we can go in here and we can adjust those areas. That's the area I painted. So that way, you know, it's just kind of another option you can do. Um, Nick Adams is asking who Bob Ross is. Um, Bob Ross is a guy. I'll show you a picture of Bob Ross. Bob Ross is a painter um, and he this guy and he used to do these paintings on TV uh, back in the day this is uh, 1983 to 1994 on PBS and uh, and he would paint these paintings kind of like um, Rolf Harris um, you know so the people from the Commonwealth would know um, who Rolf Harris is to make a green you would just do the um, it would uh, wouldn't yeah, making a green wouldn't be too hard I don't think that's a good challenge thank you for that um, I think I'll just do hue saturation so let's just go under here can you guys see the tool let's make sure we could create a hue saturation adjustment layer and um, let's have a look here and if I wanted to make this green Obviously, the mountains don't want to be green, but, you know, we could kind of go in here for the greens at our saturation. 
and, uh, and then all we need to do here is just paint with black in the areas we don't want the green just grab a brush hit the X key and we just paint this back how it was I'm doing this super quick and essentially there but maybe we've got a little bit of brown on the top because the greens are only in the valleys where the water is um, so you know this is quite California it starts to look like of course New Zealand's always green um, but California gets brown on the top because the Sun hits it and it starts to go more green in the valleys because it's still a little moist down there I apologize for the word I don't know why some people find that word like it annoys them so um, it doesn't bother me uh, but anyway so yeah so if I wanted to kind of blend it see what we're doing here just I'm doing this so quick in real life I would do a much better job and so yeah so sometimes doing that rather than just using a straight color when you start to just kind of blend it looks a little more natural so I don't know how's that look to you guys is that um, I remember Rolf's cartoon time yeah so Rolf Harris is kind of like um, I believe he's Australian was an Australian um, like an Australian Bob Ross or Bob Ross was an American Rolf Harris Except I don't think Bob Ross sang, no. Uh, Rolf Harris sings as well. Of course, he has a favorite famous song, Tiny, Gang Tiny Kangaroo Down Sport, which I'm not going to sing right now. Tiny Kangaroo Down Sport. Tiny Kangaroo Down. So you guys from uh, Commonwealth know exactly what that is. Um, so, wow, we didn't really get through too many pitches today, did we? Um, <laughs> so do you guys prefer, let me just know here, um... Yes, it is sad what happened, Donna. I, I agree. Um, very sad. Um, so, anyway, we only got through a couple of pictures this week. Do you prefer that we kind of do that and just experiment? Uh, let me know. Or would you prefer that we went through more quick, more pictures and moved more quickly? Or do you prefer doing more techniques, you know, just with, with less pictures? Let me know. Let me know what you guys prefer. And we can, of course, you know, accommodate to that. So, you know, we're almost out of time here. Um, so next week, you know, put some more of your pictures in there, guys. Um, I look forward to uh, to looking at your pictures. And by the way, I just enjoyed what some say. Sorry, how do I make an image available for which I found complicated? Uh, how do I make an image available for which I found complicated? I don't quite understand what you're saying there. You prefer the detailed work, Francis. Uh, you're liking this way, actually. Okay. Yes, guys. Oh, thanks, Russ, for reminding me. I forgot, guys. Please hit the like button if you're getting any value out of this at all. Um, and this is also going to help with the uh, with the replays as well because in about 30 minutes, YouTube will post this and it will be, uh, it'll be live. Okay, so people say more techniques. Um, can you... Uh, clarify what you mean by the more techniques. Does that mean you want me to work on more different photographs? Um, more techniques inside the individual photos? Or more photos? Let me, so just just to clarify that. Um, just so I know what you guys want. Because basically what we're doing here is we're just, literally we're just hanging out and we're fixing photos. We're doing what we want. You guys give me requests and I'm doing my best to kind of hit those. And of course, all these comments, some I might have missed after this live stream finishes, I go through and I'm going to read every single one of these comments like I do every week. Um, combining photos with color corrections, making them fit, more Photoshop skills. Okay, great. More options on the same photo. I uh, like today's fine. Okay, so you guys are liking this. Great. You know what I'm going to do just for fun? I want to just kind of show you an idea on this one here. So this is going to be something completely different we're going to be looking at. And one of the challenges that Monica had here was how to cut out these clocks. So these clocks are sitting on a concrete background and she wants to put them on a different background. So I'm going to show you a, just how I would fix this. And we're just going to do it really quick so you guys can just kind of get something a little different in here. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to grab the perspective crop tool and I'm going to drag it over. And I know for some of you guys, if it's, um, you know, it's 204, I'm going to do this, just do this in five minutes um, so I don't keep you guys because I know it's late for some of you. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just following these lines and it's pretty easy because I see this line just runs up there. And same here, we're gonna go from the edge here. I need to go a little bit more. And so what I'm looking at now is the distance between that edge and the clocks, see that? In fact, I want a little more, so why don't we pull this up? Great. And we'll pull this one up. And what I'm doing now is I'm looking at this line. See that line there? I want it to line up with the bottom of the clock. So we've got to get rid of the distortion first. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really hard for us to fix this. And I'm bringing this down. Okay. It's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just hit enter. And now we've done that, but it looks like it's a little elongated. So control J and um, our layers panel. Let me reset our panel so you guys can see here. Okay, there we go. And so what I'm gonna do is just hit control T or command T for free transform. And I'm just gonna hold the shift key and I'm just gonna pull these in a little bit to make them a little bit more square. So they're not so um, square, <laughs> make them proper circular, not oval. And this is just kind of like what I would do, just I'd create a new layer and I'm just kind of showing you this really quick. Then I would grab the selection tool here and hitting the space bar, I can move around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make one. So that's a pretty good selection around one. And then I'm just gonna fill it with black. It doesn't matter what color I fill it with, but I just chose to fill it with back, black. Background key is command delete or command backspace. And what we've done is we just filled that. So now I'm just going to copy like how many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So I'm going to copy two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I want to line this one up. I'm just kind of showing you guys a strategy. I probably won't get a perfect cutout, but this is, this is how I would do it. And then, and obviously I would just select all of these. So I'm just going to hold the shift key. So now they're all selected. And then we're just going to go up here and align and distribute. So if we align them at the top, that's going to be the uh, line at the top is that one. Okay, so we'll have to pull them down and then evenly distribute them by clicking on there. And now we just use the arrow key and we can nudge those into shape. See what we're doing? And if they don't quite match, just hit the control key or the command key and use the arrow keys to just kind of move them. So what we want to do is get this first row about right. I'm just going to do it quickly. It's not going to be perfect once again, just because of time. But you can spend a little time on this and see what we've done is we're just kind of getting these pretty good. So I'm going to put those into a group, select them all, control G for the group. And now if I hit the alt or the option key, I can drag out and duplicate that entire group. And I would do the same. And one of the things I found here when I was doing this is these clocks are not mounted perfectly even. So um, if they were, you would get a very uniform result. So essentially what we would do now is you could just hit the control key and click on any of them and just tap the arrow key a couple of times and all you're doing is just kind of nudging them into into space. So what I'm trying to do here is just fill up these clocks. I'm not going to do all of them just for the sake of time, but this is what I would do if I was you, Monica. And then just get all of these nice, you know, another way you can do this, let me show you, is if we turn on auto select and show transform controls. Here's something you might not have known. With these two options on, now I can just click and drag like I'm an illustrator. And I'm just going to use the, and all I do is just click, but I'm using the arrow keys. See what I'm doing? Just clicking now and just tapping with the arrow keys. Very, very quick and easy to select those different layers by doing that. So essentially, once you've done this and you've done them all, which I'm not going to do, then all you need to do is just select all these layers when you're done, hold the shift key to grab the bottom one, and then just hit control E to merge them together. Control E or Command E to merge them. And then we just click, Control click on there. We load the selection from all those circles. And then at this point here, we could just put these into a layer mask. And if we hide the background, there we go. We've cut out all those clocks. 
Now you'll get a better result because you're going to go inside every single one of those circles and make sure it's perfect. But I think that's the quickest way to get a super clean cut out of these. And then at this point, you could just throw them onto a different background. Um, I don't know. Let's throw this on. Oh, actually, I like that rock. Let's throw that rock texture on there. And, you know, you could just make some kind of a background out of that. I'll just hit enter. And then, you know, so you've got your clocks on there. And then you could, you know, drop, drop shadows and different things to kind of make them match and those kind of things. So anyway, that is a live from lockdown for this week. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you everybody for coming. It was really great to have you all here. Um, and uh, this official part is over. And I'm just going to kind of just chat, hang out with you guys, chat for a little bit. Oh, by the way, uh, don't forget, if you want to submit your photo for next week for Fix My Photo, uh, drop in uh, your photos there onto that link I gave you. Or you can email them if that's, if you don't use, I prefer social media because it's easier on Facebook. They're all kind of together or on Twitter at Photoshop Cafe. I can find everything there. But if you don't have social media, only if you don't have social media, you can email them to me at support at photoshopcafe.com. And so what we'll do next week is we'll do a split. This week I wanted to do a special because Fix My Photo was new, so I only worked with your photos. Next week I'll come for a couple of prepared tutorials and then also we will do your photos as well. So we'll do a little split of both. And... Um, don't forget to smash that like button once again before you leave. And if you're not subscribed here on Photoshop Cafe, I mean on YouTube here on our Photoshop Cafe, hit the subscribe button right now and also turn on the notifications and then you'll get a notification when we go live. So um, YouTube will let you know the minute we go live. So if we do any other um, live streams that we are not announcing, because I don't always send it out on the mailing list, that way you'll know. And also if you are not on Photoshop Cafe, and you're just only on uh, the YouTube channel. There's a lot on PhotoshopCafe.com. We have the written steps for a lot of the tutorials. Um, so check those out. And there's hundreds of tutorials on there. So we have written and video on there. And also join that mailing list. Because then you'll also know when we do these. And I'll send out emails whenever we go live. Anyway, <laughs> I like, don't like to talk about all of that stuff. But that's it. Um, and so I'm just going to hang out and chat with you guys. That's uh, so what we've got here. And any questions, drop your questions in there. The like button is there on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, you should see a like button. Let me, I don't know if I'll break the internet if I move this over here. But this is the screen here. Um, and the like button is the thumbs up right there. And the subscribe button is there. So just, yep, I see you guys are finding it there. The number's going up. So that's how you subscribe. And that's how you hit the like button. So I know not all of you are used to YouTube. Whoa, look at this. It's the Hall of Mirrors. I am breaking the internet. Let me move it off to the side. That was kind of cool, though. <laughs> so thumbs up, everybody. That's right, Russ. All right. So, yeah, see you next week, David. Thanks, James. Uh, C.A. Fia. Thank you. Got it. Uh, good night. And thank you, Colin, for Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for coming. Uh, Hannah, thank you. We've got Dawn here. A uh, question from Dawn. Just a question when you use the Wacom tablet. Does your screen start flashing white? Um, I find after I'm editing for a little while, it becomes unstable. Am I? Um, okay, so one of the things you want to make sure, Dawn, that you have the latest Wacom driver. Um, your Mac, you said? Yes. Yeah. So if you go under your preferences, um, you should have a Wacom tablet driver. This is it here. And make sure that you have the latest version of it. Um, because they always do updates when Mac updates things. If you don't have that proper driver, you could run into some issues. If that's not working, I'm I'm not sure. But usually that should fix it. All right. So let's see what else we've got here. Um, we'll come to the end again. Just a question. Just see if we've got any quick questions here. Less time for each photo, Colin. You got it. Um, thanks very much for your time. Thank you for all the tips. Uh, thank you for this week's stream. Very useful and interesting as always. I like you working one photograph over more compl uh, completely showing different things to do the same thing. Okay. 
So some of you like the photo, the same photo a little bit more, and some of you like me to move it along. I'll try and find a happy compromise. Really enjoyed this live chat. Thank you, Donna. Thanks so much. Hey, Nick. Um, Ari, good to see you. Heidi Winkler, are you related to the Fonz by any chance? You've probably got that your whole life. It's probably not funny, sorry. Uh, thanks for a good night from Dodgewich, England. Sleep well, Yellow Bear. Uh, thank you, Norman. Where's the link? Uh, the link is... Is that it? Here's a link. And that'll get you onto our Facebook group. And on the group there, you can submit that photo. You'll see the Uncle Sam that I put on there. I want your photos. Roll on next week. Yeah. Okay, Tracy um, and Andrew, Kathy, um, Chris Bacon, uh, Stuart, the photographer that did that beautiful Central Otago photo. Love these, really useful. You are delightful. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, what have we got here? I do like the subtle ideas and side comments. Okay, great. Great crowd tonight. Thanks to everyone from Russ. Um, Okay, so a lesson on understanding gradients, that's good. Liking it, learning a lot from every episode. Thanks, Colin. Okay, I'm going to go to the end. So if any questions, make sure they're there at the end. And uh, have to watch this from the beginning. Yep, the live stream will be back up. The replay will be up in about 30 minutes. Um, reminder of photo to send size, JPEG. and Well, you would have to send it as a JPEG. Um, and just anything 2,000 pixels or over would be great. Uh, especially like co comments on color. Um, that was from uh, D Blado six, De Blado, NPS. Thanks so much. You got it. You got it there. Ashwood, Samir, uh, Carolyn. Um, oh, you came late. It's okay. The replay will be there. Thanks so much, Christopher. I love it. Keep it up. Maybe think about adding an L. Adding an L. Not sure what that means. It'll come to me. See you, JP. Have to watch in the beginning, uh, newbie. Oh, by the way, uh, newbies, um, I am starting a beginners series. I forgot to mention this. Um, so it's not going to replace any of the usual content. Every Tuesday, I do a tutorial. Right now, every Thursday, we have the live stream. And I'm thinking right now, maybe a Friday or a Saturday. We haven't figured out the day yet. But I'm going to do a beginner's tutorial. We're going to start with one on layers. I'm just editing that right now. Um, I'll probably put that out either tomorrow or Saturday. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in those. We'll run them for a few weeks. If it's stuff you guys like, I'll keep doing them. If it's not, we'll I'll spend my energies in other places. Um, and if you are new or newer to Photoshop and you want this beginner series, let me know what's the best day for you. And also let me know what's the best topics that you'd like me to cover. But we'll start with layers. Okay, thanks, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Peter, Vita. Uh, love my cat, 21. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks from Perth, Wacom Techniques. When you choose flow and opacity is through experience or trial and error. Um, flow and opacity is, uh, for Davey, it's just my personal taste. Um, I just started using opacity and just used it that way and I just felt comfortable that way and just always used it. Um, I know most people use flow and uh, maybe I should, I you know, but for me it's just, yeah, it's just my personal taste. It's what works for me. So it's not one way or wrong way or right way, um, you know, and who knows, maybe next week I might be saying, hey, it's, it's flow, flow is better than opacity, um, you know, but right now that's just how I like to work. Um, really interesting. Thanks for France. Always learning something from you. Thanks, Dawn. Um, I look forward to beginning series. I missed this on. Okay, great. So you'll get that. Beginners, yes. Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is the best for Dina. Okay. Love a beginner series. Ray. Hi from Saudi, from uh, Jason, from Saudi Arabia. Um, hi. Francis, uh, good time. This time is good in Scotland and 10 at night. Yes, yeah, start with layers. Keep forgetting how. Okay. Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. James, uh, Jim, sorry, Jim. Uh, super great lesson. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for Toronto. Chris, you will be live streaming beginners. No, I'm not going to be live streaming the beginners. It's just going to be pre recorded. Um, and sometimes, you know, I find things are good to just 
pre-record because that way I can edit everything out and just keep it very concise. Um, all right. All right, guys. So we are well over our time. Thanks for joining us this week at Live From Lockdown. And we'll be back. So this Friday or Saturday, I'll be putting up the beginners uh, class on Lightroom. I mean Lightroom. On Layers. And next Tuesday, there'll be another tutorial, which I just did one last Tuesday too, which is on Photoshop Cafe and on YouTube. And next Thursday, we're going to be back here from live from lockdown. So thanks for joining me, guys. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.